Uh, so hi again, everybody. Uh, my name is Lindsay. I'm from Women Who Explore. Um, we are recording this. We're going to get started here shortly. Uh, so if you want to turn your cameras off, you're welcome to. Um, we ask that you just add your questions in the chat and then we'll uh, address them all at the end of the class along with doing the giveaway. So um, yeah, I'm going to just let you take it over right away, Ashley. All right. Uh, so hi, welcome. I was going to do like a thing with like, raise your hands, but I think people's cameras are off. Anyway, quick question was going to be uh, just curious, if, uh, folks, if you have your camera on, you want to raise your hand or do a little thumbs up or anything. If any of y'all are in this class because you have an adventure coming up that you're kind of stoked to get your meal stuff in order for, raise your hand if you are. Me always. <laughs> um, the other question was how, how many of y'all like food? Go ahead and raise your hand. <laughs> well, you're in the right place. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to a screen share really quick and uh, start my slideshow. Again, um, if questions come up, it's, it's pretty um, information dense, but uh, it's also just like a base level for everyone to kind of take this information and kind of funnel it into your own planning. Everyone's got their own styles and ways of learning. Um, so take what works for you from this and whatever doesn't, feel free to just let it pass you right on by. So let me go ahead and start the slideshow. Oops, give me one second here. All right, so this is a backcountry meal planning clinic. Um, what we're gonna cover today is we're gonna go over a um, quick introduction of myself and what makes me feel like I am qualified to teach you. Um, <laughs> you may think I'm not qualified, that's fine too. Uh, some considerations and things to be aware of when you're planning your upcoming adventures, types of food, where to shop, um, what and how much to pack, uh, building your kitchen, just like a quick overview of that, because that could be an entire clinic all on its own. And then I'll be sharing a planning tool with y'all via email. Um, but this will, I'll just go over it with you so you can understand what you're looking at when you do get your hands on it. Uh, so my name is Ashley Lance. I'm the owner and founder of Fernway Food Company. If you're not familiar with Fernway Food Company, we are a plant-based and gluten-free dehydrated adventure company based out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, we use sustainable packaging. If you read Backpacker Magazine, you may have seen this in there recently. Uh, this is our green tamale pie, just one best backpacking dinner by Backpacker Magazine. Um, We've just been doing food for uh, since 2019. It's just been a really fun adventure. Um, and I started the company because I like to adventure and I love food. Uh, what makes me qualified to do those things is I have a culinary background. I have worked in kitchens. I also, part of my degree was a culinary background. I learned how to do working in a kitchen and writing recipes and things like that. And then after college, worked as an adventure guide, leading biking and multi-sport adventure trips. Beyond that, I just love hiking and backpacking, bikepacking yoga. And um, since I'm now a mother, uh, a lot more gardening and cooking at home, um, but we've taken our kiddo out backpacking and this summer we're hoping to uh, do some bikepacking with him too. Um, started making food for myself back in 2014 because back then the options were pretty much garbage and they made me feel like garbage and I just thought well hell I can do this better so here we are. Uh, hopefully I'll teach y'all something so you can make food for yourself um, at some point that's a whole again a whole other thing too but um, some ideas of where to start so. So considerations, this will probably be the bulk of uh, the class here. So um, I'll try to go like glaze and detail, see what I can get, get through here. Uh, so I have some notes, so I'll be referencing that just to make sure I don't miss anything. So some considerations will be um, calories per ounce. So this is basically like a simple math equation. It's like the idea of looking at a Snickers bar and a small apple, they weigh about the same, but you're gonna get a lot more calories out of something like a Snickers than an apple. So when you're planning your meals, you kind of want to do that simple math of like, 
okay, how much does this weigh? How many calories are in it? And then figure out what the calorie per ounce ratio is for that. Um, really kind of helps with figuring out like if you're getting enough fat, protein, calories, um, and all those things that your body really needs and is burning while you are out adventuring. So that's something to look at right away when you're picking out your foods. Um, does the weight of what you're packing match your caloric needs? Um, so kind of again, like, and I, something to think about and sort of basis off of a like biker will burn, an average biker would burn about 550 calories an hour, a hiker around 500. So if you are doing those activities, you're gonna need that many extra calories you know, per day to, to make up for what you are burning. And so, you know, four hour hike, you're burning 2000 extra calories in theory. So um, finding ways to be able to pack enough food so you are getting and meeting your caloric needs. Um, so bulk versus weight, again, this will kind of, this is based on like a lot of different things. Um, you know, the size of your bags that you are packing. Um, how much elevation are you climbing? How long is your hike? Um, so all those different things will kind of help you figure out whether it needs to be more important for your food to be very lightweight or if it can be like a little bit bulkier and more calorie dense. Um, so yeah, so like if you are going up a lot of elevation, you're gonna want a lighter pack. It's gonna be easy on your legs and feet. So you're probably gonna end up going with more like dehydrated foods and things like that. If you're just going for like a weekend trip and you wanna enjoy yourself, you're not gonna mind so much if you take up room with like a can of, I don't know, olive tamponade or something, you're getting fancy, who knows? So kind of figuring out if those things, like what is more important for your specific trip. Um, Water is a huge one. So this has a lot of components to it. Um, first one being like, is there water available on your hike? Um, here in the Pacific Northwest where I'm based, like water is almost never an issue, but we definitely did some backpacking in Arizona where we hiked all day and there was one water source and we ended up having to camp near it and changed our whole route because water that we thought was gonna be along the trail just wasn't there. Um, so that will definitely affect what you pack. Um, so if you're in a place where there's like a lot of water, dehydrated meals are a great option or freeze dried meals, um, because you're not so worried about like, if you're going to have enough water to drink and cook. Um, so that is something that would also affect it. If it's really long distances between water sources, and you're going to have to do a really long water carry. Something that's important to know is that a liter of water weighs 2.2 pounds. So for every liter of water, you're adding that much extra weight to your pack. So in those cases, it might make more sense to pack meals that require no water because they might end up, you know, taking up less space and the weight is probably equivalent to what you might need to pack water wise. Um, you know, planning your day. Well, if I'm going to have water in the morning and I'm not going to have it till the next morning, making sure you plan to have enough. Um, personally, I have run out of water on a hike and um, it was scary. So I always like for me, I will play, like plan to pack an extra liter of water because uh, I don't want to be in that place, even if it means extra weight on my pack. So figuring out what water means to you and where it is and how often it's accessible on your hike will like totally determine the types of food um, you pack. So, so that's definitely a big thing to consider when you're planning your meals. And I guess also with water, like, is it potable? Like it might be there, but do you want to drink it? Like, is it going to ruin your filter to have to filter it? So there's a lot of things with the water. Um, to really have in mind, there's going to be a lot of, re the, the nice thing is there are, there tend to be in areas where there is less water, more resources available to find out about water. So you can go on to, like, I know in Arizona, they have a whole like website based around like where to find water and it's um, updated by the community. You can reach out to ranger stations. Um, you can, if there's a hike that you're going to do, you can go on Instagram and search for it and ask people who've recently been on that hike where the water was, um, all trails, there's, there's a lot of resources, but I'm um, making sure you have a good understanding of 
water, where it's going to be and how much will really help. Um, okay, so will it, oh, here we go. Uh, will the food stay fresh? Um, so it is often really wonderful to have fresh ingredients when you're on the trail. It's good for your stomach, it tastes good. It's nice to have something with some crunch that has water in it that isn't added. Um, so if you decide to do that, like something to ask yourself is, how's it gonna fare in my bag? Like a, a good way to think about it is if you're, if you're buying in a store and you're packing it in a grocery bag, is it gonna be an item that can be at the bottom of the grocery bag or is it gonna need to be at the top of the grocery bag? If it's a top of the grocery bag item, it's not gonna fare well in a backpack or any sort of pack that you are putting other things around it. Um, you know, so, it, and another thing long is like temperature. Is it gonna be really hot where you are? If it's gonna be really hot, like maybe if you had wanted to plant like something that is a little bit more perishable, you may want to eat it right away. If it's gonna to get too hot and maybe spoil. Um, or if you're perhaps bringing like leafy greens, um, if it gets really cold at night, like when leafy greens, like just in your, like in your fridge, when they get kind of frozen, they get real gross. So maybe not pack those if it's gonna be really cold. Um, for if you're gonna do cheese, go with a hard cheese over a soft cheese. It'll just be a little less sweaty and disgusting. Um, yeah, so if, if you are planting fresh foods, think about like carrots, potatoes, um, onions, things that again, could be at the bottom of your in theory grocery bag. Um, another thing, oops. Uh, okay, so will it cook or rehydrate with only boiling water? So one of the really nice things about like pre like dehydrated or freeze dried meals is that you boil the water, you turn the gas off, you pour it in your bag, stir, and it's ready to eat. So it requires less fuel, um, you know, less time that you're waiting around for food, um, less water. So uh, if you are going to bring something that needs to be cooked, like say you're bringing some pasta. Um, yes, it's a dried food, but you need to boil the water, then you're adding the food to the water, and then you have to also like continue to cook it while it's going. So it's going to use a lot of fuel, which will be something that you would then need to plant enough fuel if you're going to do something like that. And if you're in bear country, now what are you going to do with the boiling water? So uh, you're not just going to want to throw that out. So those are some things to think about um, when you're thinking about like how your food is gonna cook. Um, is it something that requires oil? Like we've tried to do pancakes uh, <laughs> on top of a jet boil, which is foolish because it only has burn or off uh, as a feature and we didn't have oil and it just, it was like scraping pancakes or eating burnt pancakes for the rest of the trip, no matter what we made, that was just like the flavor of the trip. Um, so if it's something that needs oil, pack oil, or maybe consider not bringing it and consider how your stove might cook, um, reading like the back of, of the package and figure out like, what does this require? Uh, what does it need to, to come about? And if it does have leftover parts to it, if I'm in bear country and basically everywhere, how am I gonna properly dispose of this? Um, so I can leave no trace. Um, oops, okay, here's two. Uh, so, <laughs> Is there going to be places to resupply? So a resupply is going to be like a two-parter here. Resupply can mean either is there going, if you're not familiar with the term, it's the idea of going on a longer trip and only carrying a portion of your food with you and then having an opportunity to get more food part of the way through your trip so you can um, not have as much of like weight to carry, as much bulk, um, just maybe some variety. Uh, so things to consider with resupplies are, are you going to be buying in a store, like doing a store-bought resupply, or are you going to be shipping yourself your resupply? Um, so tackling the resupply in the store first, a lot of times where you're going to be hiking, you're going to be out in the wilderness, and the communities that you will be doing these store resupplies in are going to be pretty small communities. So make sure that, uh, especially now that post COVID, like make sure that shop is still in business. Um, make sure you know the days and hours of their operation and know that because again, they are often small 
locations that they might close seasonally. They might close when it's been really slow. They might close because their kid needs to be picked up from school. So make sure if you're planning to do a store resupply that you call ahead and have an understanding of what that might look like for you. If you have dietary restrictions, um, make sure that they're gonna have something for you that you can eat, whether that's an allergy or whether you choose to eat vegan or gluten-free, like any of these things, make sure that they're going to have something that works for you before you plan to buy it there. Um, and they're often super nice and you can maybe even just ask to hold something for you if you know when you're gonna be there. Um, if you are doing uh, resupplies and shipping to yourself, some things to consider are, you know, post office hours. Um, make sure you know how long they'll hold your stuff for you. Some places will only, like, they often ask you to put the date, uh, the anticipated date of when you're going to be picking up your items on there. Um, and, you know, make sure that they'll be open on those days, that they'll hold it for that period if something comes up just letting them know so they don't ship your box back. And often they'll um, have kind of specific needs on um, what needs to be on the label. So just kind of checking in. And a lot of that information is available on different um, websites, depending on the trail you're going on. Um, but just make sure you, you understand what either those small businesses that do offer like resupply pickups um, or the post office, like when they're there and make sure it's convenient for you and them. Um, lastly, a consideration that's super important is like, will it taste good? Um, we have definitely brought meals that I thought would be good. Like I love instant mashed potatoes and I love sausages. And I thought, hey, let's mix that together. That sounds so good. And it was so gross and I had nothing else to eat and I had to eat it. And I <laughs> felt nauseous the whole time. Um, so like, don't experiment. Um, try, like, try not to try super new meals that maybe you've created on your own um, for the first time on a trip. Um, try them at home first, like give them, give them a taste. Also make sure that they, they do, if it is a, a homemade dehydrated meal that it reconstitutes, that you know how much water it takes, um, that you just have an understanding of what that is. And if you do decide to go for the first time on the trail, Maybe bring a backup, either like a bar or something that could be supplemented just in case things go horribly wrong. Um, maybe some Imodium um, or Pepto, some, depending on which direction things could go for you. Because um, sometimes even meals that you buy in stores can make you feel bad. It's kind of unfortunately part of the nature of like dehydrated and freeze dried meals is they, they tend to make you a little gassy and uh, sometimes worse. So just maybe have plan for that as well. Um, yeah, so those are some considerations for y'all. Okay, I'm really failing at this right now. Okay, types of food. So I've touched on um, fresh foods earlier. Again, they can make you feel really good on the trail and often they can be worth their weight. Um, if you do plan to bring some fresh foods, um, again, make sure that they're, they're like seated well in your packs, in your bags, um, so they don't get too beaten up. And, and because they might be heavier, eat them first, like kind of plan your meals around eating some of those fresh items first, so they don't sit and go bad in your bags. If they do, then you have to figure out like, either you're carrying rotten food out with you, if you're in bear country, um, or, uh, or you have to eat rotten food so you don't have to figure out what to do with it. Um, pro tip, we started doing a Pringles can. So we eat Pringles at lunch on the first day and then it fits really nicely in like a side pocket of a backpack or in um, a water, like a water bottle holder. And we just put all our garbage um, in a Pringles can and it's got a nice lid and it's, it works for us really well for managing garbage and things like that on the trail. All right. Beyond fresh foods, you have the dry foods. So this is if you're in the grocery store, think of like all those items that are like not on the outside, all the middle row items. This is like your rice mixes, your like pasta, like, you know, the simply pastas and instant mashed potatoes and 
all those kind of convenience foods that you'd be surprised how many of them just need water. Um, instant stuffing is actually become like our like the stovetop is actually really tasty for a two person meal uh, and you can add stuff to it like dried fruit and things and kind of make it a little bit better. Um, but if you're looking to save money um, and maybe like supplement some other store bought meals or you're looking to do a little bit of like your own dehydrating but want a nice base to add that stuff to, these items are gonna be really great. They are affordable, uh, they have a long shelf life, they're probably in pretty hearty packaging. If they're in boxes, take it out, just bring the bag. You don't need that extra space. Um, often, depending where you shop, you can buy dried mushrooms and other dried vegetables or fruits, which you can also use to supplement. So um, just make sure you know, uh, again, like what, we what I mentioned previously was how long does it take to cook? How much water does it need? If it's gonna require extra cooking time, again, plan enough fuel so you can do that. Um, but it's a great place to save money and uh, to really be able to get creative with some basic items. Um, so old school uh, canned foods. If you decide to go this route, um, make sure that the canned items you bring have a pull top or if it requires a can opener that you have one, and if it's on your Leatherman or something that you actually know how to use it, those things take forever and they will make the sharpest edges. So just be aware of that. Um, so with the sharp edges too, be careful with packing that out. Don't put it near your, um, like your sleeping pads, near if you do like a water bladder, anything like that, just, anything that it could kind of tear, including yourself, um, just be really careful with uh, canned items. Another nice thing now is um, if I say Tetra Pak, you know, like the little box things, uh, a lot of canned items like beans and things will come in more of like a juice box style container. Um, and that can be a really great option. Just again, make sure you have like a knife or a way to open it. Um, they're heavier, they're bulkier but most of the time you can eat them right away. They don't need uh, to be cooked a lot of times. So if you're looking to save space, uh, you know, like if, if water or things, I guess not space, but if water is an issue, the, these kind of things can um, kind of save you there. Uh, and, or if fuel, you run out of fuel, you know, it's right there ready to eat. Um, yeah, but sharp edges, be careful for those and make sure you know how to open it. Um, okay, so freeze dried meals. So freeze dried meals and dehydrated meals are different. So freeze dried meals is a relatively new process. It came about during World War II. Uh, it was originally created as a way to transport plasma and medicines, and then eventually they use that technology for foods. Uh, the process is there is like an airtight chamber, and the food is dropped to below freezing temperatures and then slowly heat it up, allowing the water to go from a solid to a gas state and then it kind of evaporates. So it really kind of allows food to hold its shape. Um, it retains a lot of nutrition. Um, it's lighter, it's like very light, it's very quick to rehydrate. Uh, so there, if you decide to buy these meals, they're great. If you decide you wanna do that yourself, know that freeze drying machines for at home can be very expensive, but they are available um, and would be something to be able to play with. Um, let's see, so dehydrated meals, uh, this is like a process that's been around forever since like 12,000 BC, like people have been drying foods before it was done in the sun and smoke houses and things of that nature, but it's all kind of the same idea. Nowadays with modern machines, that process is um, hot, dry air is blown over the food to kind of remove water. It's hot enough to dry, but without cooking the foods. Um, dehydrated foods will typically be like more that shrunken state, so little, you know, like a withered look. Um, they'll be much smaller and uh, more fibrous, which is good for like digestion. And often they take longer to rehydrate. So that's kind of like the main difference between dehydrated and freeze-dried meals. Um, other great things for foods, like there's entire groups of people who um, just do snacks and bars and never cook. So this is a way to go 
about things. Um, I often just use meals and or the like snacks and bars as a way to supplement. Uh, we'll sometimes do that for lunch with like some nut butters and things, but, um, but this is a great way to have calories. And if you decide that like cooking is not your thing and you really want to save the weight of like no kitchen stuff, you could absolutely do this. Just have a plate of a uh, way to like pack out your garbage and things. Um, beverages, you should absolutely bring beverages. The right now there's like so many good things. You can get green drinks, you can get like smoothie powders, you can get lattes, like literally all the drinks. Electrolytes can be super important, especially if you are in an area where it's gonna be hot and dry, being able to allow yourself to retain the water by the salt and those other um, kind of vitamins and minerals in uh, electrolyte drinks will be really helpful. Um, there's all kinds of different brands out there now, so you don't just have to go with Gatorade or things like that. Um, ones that have like more nutritional value and less sugar. Um, my husband always likes to tell me that whiskey weighs less than water. Uh, so there's that. Uh, so like having a nice beverage at the end of a hard day is a really nice treat for yourself. So if you have like a really hard day planned, maybe pack one of those like Boda boxes, like have a glass of wine when you get to the top, um, have some whiskey, have a beer. Uh, if you do bring cans, just remember if you plan to flatten them to save space, there's gonna be those sharp edges. So make sure you pack it in a place where it's not gonna puncture anything important. Um, coffee, uh, again, I personally at this point have chosen to go with instant coffee because there's a lot of really great options out there or ones that have like a tea bag situation. So it's all kind of contained. Um, if you do decide to do something more like a pour over or an AeroPress, just make sure you have a plan for packing out your coffee grounds and your filters. So whether that's a Ziploc or some, you know, putting it in that, you know, uh, Pringles container, but just make sure whatever you decide to do that you can safely pack out um, your grounds and or your trash. Um, let's see. Okay. So spices and fats. Uh, if you've cooked at home, you have spices, like use that same idea when you're going out into the wilderness, especially if you're getting like some different meals that maybe you haven't tried, or you're planning to do like some of the like rice mixes or a mix of like dehydrated stuff in your own. Um, we at this point always pack like salt, pepper, cinnamon, sugar, red pepper flake. And then depending on what our meals are, Sometimes we'll bring like a coconut milk powder, which you can also use in your coffee as a creamer um, or use it to add fats and like a little more richness um, to different dishes, um, you know, kind of whatever spices you use at home. Um, plan to bring a little bit. You can either do like small baggies or everyone has tiny containers that have ended up in your house. And even um, some of the outdoor stores will sell like small like spice containers. Um, that you can refill and bring those. Uh, I think we've even used like a contact case before, like an old contact case and just put a little bit in there like for salt and pepper. So there's there's all kinds of containers lying around if you just open your eyes to opportunities or repurpose things, but, but bring spices. It can really add a lot to meals. Um, yeah, so, and then along with that, like fat. So fats can be a variety of things. I know Trader Joe's sells packets of coconut oil um, you can also, if you've ever gone to a deli, a lot of times they'll have like oil and vinegar packets, grab some of those, mayo, any opportunity to add fat to your diet while you're exercising is going to be good. If you put like a coconut oil packet in your oatmeal, it's going to allow that to be like a slower burn. So it'll add fats and a, a lot more calories and really stretch meals a lot further. Um, so adding flavor, fat and nutrition, um, Ghee is also shelf stable. So um, if you do dairy products, ghee can be another nice option. You can bring a little container of it and use that um, to add flavor and fats to your meals. Okay, so just a quick overview on make your own versus purchase. So I touched on this a little bit. I think the perfect balance is a combination of the two. Like if you, if you can, buy all your meals and you want to do that, like good on you. It is, it, it adds up, it gets expensive and it might not always feel the greatest. So, um, and then making your own is like very labor intensive. Like 
it, and it uses, if you're doing it at home, um, I have a, a suggestion if you're looking to get into it, the Nesco Snack Master is a really great intro. Um, dehydrator, usually you can find them. I think we found ours at like a yard sale for 25 bucks, but, um, but you can find them online for under a hundred usually. And it's a great place to start. You can also use your oven. Just turn your oven to a super low temperature, put it on a baking tray and just kind of monitor it. Um, so there's options to do that. And if you're looking to make your own, um, how I started was just buy food that was getting ready to spoil. Um, I would just kind of cut it. Like I wouldn't say go much over a half inch thickness. Otherwise it's just going to take a really long time. Um, but I would just cut things up and put it on there and, and see what happened. If I had leftovers, same thing. I would just throw some leftovers in there um, and monitor it. If you do end up buying a dehydrator that doesn't have a timer, you can buy Christmas light timers and just use that. Um, say like you're going to be gone at work things like that uh, as like a, a hack for if you don't have the money or don't want to spend the money to buy a dehydrator that has a timer built in. Um, there's lots of recipe resources online. I highly suggest you find any like Amish or farmsteading or homestead website that is giving you recipes for dehydrating, go with it. Like they always turn out amazing for me. Um, but yeah, doing like a combo of like making your own, buying some just in case things go wrong, um, maybe buying some of those grocery items and like mixing it in with what you've made for yourself. Like that's going to be a really uh, solid kind of mix of things going on. Um, and, and there's kind of like some redundancies in there too. So like if something goes wrong, you have some, some meals that were made to work every time. Um, so where to shop, um, outdoor stores. So this is like a mix of, you know, your REIs, uh, your EMS, Cabela's, all those places, they're going to have, uh, meals that you can buy. Um, I would also say if you have any small retailers near you, it's really important to shop small, shop local and support businesses in your community. So, um, always choose the smaller businesses when you can. It really keeps more funds uh, in your neighborhood and that's super important. But like if all you have is an REI or, or a Walmart or anything, shop wherever you can, like, um, but shop small when you can. Uh, where I live in Portland, we have a lot of Asian markets and I have found a lot of really interesting items, a lot of mushrooms and like shrimp patties and noodles and I don't know like that's where I found like the dried coconut milk powder but there's a lot of opportunities to find interesting foods and interesting ingredients um, at Asian markets so we do a lot of um, our shopping for backpacking trips there. Uh, Trader Joe's too is actually a big one if you're looking for grocery stores and more like easy two-person meals Trader Joe's, your whatever grocery store, all of those, you're going to find a lot of those canned and um, dried mixes and things like that, along with fresh. Um, there's some really great online stores too. Um, I really like uh, Garage Grown Gear. If you've never heard of them, you should look them up. They support small cottage brands. Uh, they really focus on ultra light gear and uh, you really get to support small companies like ours that are just kind of up and coming. Um, also, most stores, even maybe your local small outdoor retailer might have an online store as well that you can shop at. So if going into stores still isn't your thing, you can still support them by buying from them and then picking up curbside or things like that. Or have it shipped to your house so you don't have to leave it all until you go outside. Um, when you do find companies and brands you like, if you want to support those companies the most, buy direct, find their website, find um, their Instagram or whatever they're doing. Uh, by buying direct, you put more money directly into the hands of the small businesses that you really like. And again, that keeps those small businesses uh, around longer so you can continue to buy their products. So what and how much to pack? Um, so you can kind of, I don't know, I've got like a bunch of windows up here. So the photo on the right is how my brain works. Um, I like to pack everything up. 
I like to put it in line of when I plan on eating it. I like to label it with what day uh, and what meal it's for, like every ingredient. Um, and then I pack it as I plan to eat it. It helps me to know that I have enough things packed. But anyway, so that's that's what's going on in that photo over there is like how I lay out um, my, my food for my trip. So. Um, Let's see here. So I, 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 so I always pack one more meal and snack than I think I'm going to need. Um, we were doing the Wonderland Trail in around Mount Rainier and we had a resupply bucket and a beer exploded and ruined like five meals. <laughs> and uh, it was really stressful because we were kind of out. There was just like buckets that we had sent ourselves in a, like in a small area that was bear safe and there was no place to buy more things. And we were still like two days away from uh, getting food, but luckily we had packed an extra meal in our previous one. And so we were kind of able to get by by sharing food with our friends. Um, but if we hadn't done that, we would have been in a bad place or not have had enough food for the trip. So I always plan one more meal and one more snack than I think I'm gonna need. Um, just again, for that like redundancy and to kind of like, know that you are covered. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we'll just leave this up. Uh, on days one and two, you're gonna be less hungry. And that's just kind of like physiologically, like our bodies tend to store glycogen. Um, and it's just like a store of nutrients and fats and sugars and things, carbohydrates that our body will go into on those first one and two days. And we'll start to burn through those first before you will start to actually feel like pretty hungry. Um, so I always feel like around day three, your those stores are starting to run low. So you're gonna start feeling that like hiker hunger. Um, uh, it, it just like a higher recognition of that you need more food. Um, so it's just like your body adjusting to exercise and the amount of strain you're putting it into. And then I feel like that even after I get off the hike, like the day after, and sometimes even after the day after that, I still feel like super hungry all day. Cause your body's just like your metabolism is kicked in and you're just like burning calories like crazy. If you're planning like a longer trip and uh, you're kind of trying to figure out how much food to plan to pack, um, if you use how you feel in a shorter trip, like say you do a test trip, how you feel on day three is probably a, a good place to start for figuring out how much food um, your body might need and how many snacks and those kinds of things. So use that like kind of day three and beyond as a way to figure out how much food you and your body needs. Um, so if you are looking to cut weight, so there's this idea in ultralight backpacking that you should plan, you should plan to pack no more than a pound of food per person a day. Um, so if you're looking to do that, like really being aware of that, like that ratio of calories to weight, um, I find that to be an unrealistic amount for a human who enjoys food. So we tend to shoot for like a pound and a half of food per person a day. And then with snacks often, or like if we're treating ourselves, it ends up being closer to two pounds. But as an idea, if you're thinking of like, okay, what should I be looking for? Um, and then you could always, um, we have a scale at home that we weigh all our food on and have an understanding of like how much each meal weighs. Um, and that helps us figure out like if we're looking to cut things like maybe we brought too many sesame sticks or something we'll just kind of cut that back a little bit um if you are looking to cut weight uh in general you are having uh you're you're having meals at camp for breakfast and dinner right so you have your stove you probably have your water out it's a great opportunity to do like a dehydrated meal or something like that um something that would weigh less that would be able to cook with water. Um, a lot of times lunches are going to end up being snacks, bars, fresh items, things that don't need to be cooked. So you don't have to get your whole camp kitchen out and do it. So those items are often heavier. Um, so if you're looking to cut weight, like breakfast and dinner can be a great time. Um, if you're looking for convenience during lunch. Now, this can be different if you're in the desert, like often when you're doing desert hikes, like you're trying to take that siesta midday. Um, 
trying to get out of the sun, find some shade and really chill out for a little bit. So that, you know, then you might be looking to have quick, easy breakfast. You can get out the door, or, you know, whatever, out the tent. Um, and then having like a longer lunch where you can break out your stove and do some cooking and things there. Um, so that can shift depending where your terrain is. Um, always supplement with snacks and bars and electrolytes. This is a great opportunity to add more calories. Like you really want to avoid bonking. And that idea is just that like your energy level gets really low and your muscles start to like kind of like spasm, like a lot of times people will pass out or they just kind of feel really frantic. It can like, it can manifest in a lot of different ways, but to prevent like the bonking, um, having gels or shot blocks or an electrolyte drink or a bar um, easily accessible. So it doesn't feel like it's a thing to eat it when you're hungry is really important. So really putting those kinds of things like either in a pocket or if you're biking like a snack hole or some, someplace easy. Um, but having snacks and electrolytes to get you through like those last bits of the day will like go a long way. Typically I plan um, for biking, I, I tend to snack a lot more. Um, I'll probably have two to four snacks in a day. And then um, for hiking more like one to two, I'll plan like one to two bars um, or like gummies or Snickers really doesn't matter. Like anything that is gonna taste good and be easy to eat um, to have those easily accessible. Um, so you can kind of get through your hike and have enough calories in your body. Um, you really want to eat your fresh and heaviest items first. So as you're kind of like laying out your food, like maybe you plan to have salami on day two, maybe have a day one, um, just to kind of move it along. If you're going to have apples again, so you don't, they don't get as bruised. Um, but when you're kind of like laying out your meal plans, um, do those heaviest and fresh ones first, just to kind of save yourself um, when you can. Uh, let's see, don't forget dessert. So because like a lot of glycogen is basically just sugar, um, it's like stores of sugar and fats in your body. So you are burning that all day and how molecularly like sugar is set up, the carbohydrate is actually like one of the first things that your body will like burn on like really tough days because it's quick, it's easy. It's like car carbs and sugar are all the same. Like your body sees it, it burns it, it burns it. Where things like fats and proteins take a little bit longer for your body to kind of break down. Um, so really treat yourself to desserts on hikes and things. Your body's gonna burn right through it. It's exactly what it's looking for to replace those like uh, glycogen stores that you've been burning through by working really hard all day out of venturing. So treat yourself to dessert. Um, okay, quick overview in building your kitchen. So again, this could be like a whole thing and everyone's kind of got their own things that work for them. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of put all these up here and run through them. So stove, this can be any number of things. Personally, us, like we now use like an alcohol stove and we made it ourselves. It, you can look up how to do it. It's like two Red Bull cans some holes poked in it and we buy denatured alcohol, which you can buy in hardware stores, uh, automotive stores, basically any kind of store that has a, um, like a hardware type section. Um, but other ones you have your, you know, like your whisper lights and you have the ones that have the pump and jab boils. Like there's so many, you just find the one that you have that works for you, that you understand and does what you need to do. Like Everyone is different. Everyone has its own benefits. Just find the one that you like and make sure you know how to use it. Like before you go out in the woods, set it up, use it. Like make sure you can get it going and then maybe do it one more time just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Um, so it's really important to do that. And then make sure, because this also helps like make sure you have enough, like the right fuel. They all, some of them require different things. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have a fuel that works for, your stove. Um, another thing along with the fuel, like if you are planning to do resupplies or need multiples, often you can't ship that stuff or you have to lie about it and be really careful. So also make sure if you're planning to resupply fuel that the fuel you need for your stove will be available at the spot you're planning to resupply. Um, also with like the lighter matches fire starter, I would highly suggest a redundancy in that as well. If you have a lighter, bring some matches just in case. If you're using fireproof or waterproof matches, 
in a Ziploc bag somewhere have a not waterproof set of matches just in case. Um, if all else fails, like know how to use like the flint and have that. But like, if you don't have fire to get your stove going, you're not gonna be able to cook your food. So having a redundancy there, I feel like is super important just so you can cook your food. Um, again, depending on the stove, if you're using a jet boil, it has a pot built in. Um, make sure you have a way to boil your water um, if it doesn't already come with it and a utensil. Um, if you're, depending on what kind of pot you have, if you have a Teflon pot, make sure you're not bringing like a metal or titanium or something spoon because you'll scrape the Teflon off and slowly poison yourself. So make sure your utensil works with the pot and other things that you are planning to bring. Um, I'm going to use extras in general to give you an idea of things that you can bring. So like a, a mug for coffee, if you don't want to drink your coffee out of your pot, um, a sponge and soap. Uh, if you bring soap, make sure it's biodegradable and that um, it's like environmental friendly. If you're planning on washing in any water source, which is highly not recommended, but if you do it, do it downstream of where other people will um, be filtering their water and drinking from it. Another way to prevent that is we bring a spatula. Like uh, if you get like a, a spatula, take the handle out and just bring that. We use that to get all the bits out of our stove. So we really don't have a lot of food in it. Then we'll do some water boil and we'll drink the like the dirty water. Um, pot koozies or a koozie for your um, like your pouches is really helpful for keeping that food warm and helping it to kind of rehydrate faster. Um, if you're planning to cook together with someone else, bringing a bowl, um, if you don't want to eat out of the same pot, a knife is super important. Um, you should have one for not just like kitchen, but for like anything, you never know when you might need to cut something free. Um, and then cutting board also if you're planning on doing anything that might require chopping or some sort of surface that you feel comfortable cutting on. Um, so those are just some ideas of the extras. Um, how am I doing with time? Oh, we're doing great. Okay. Uh, so their quick note is going stove free. So this is like a big trend right now, especially in ultralight backpacking. So people go, will go stove free and they will um, cold soak, uh, which is the idea that what often happens is people use like um, a Talenti ice cream container or a, a peanut butter jar and they will put their food into that, add cold water and then keep it in their pack um, and use their body heat or no heat at all uh, and eat the food out of that way. They do a lot of bars and jerkies and things like that. Um, it's totally a way to do it. Uh, it's, you know, to each their own but it's something that is available. Again, if you decide like, this is too much stuff, I don't wanna deal with all this, you can really simplify it by just doing like a cold soak or going stove free. So it'd be something to look into. Okay, so this is a meal planning tool that I will be sending out to y'all. So I'm just gonna kind of quickly talk about how I use it. And again, feel free to use this or not use this, it's just, how my brain works. So at the top of the sheet, um, I, I, I will save them too, to be honest with you, because if I'm doing a trip that had, like sometimes I don't want to rethink everything every time. So I'll just repeat a menu because it's easy. And then I already have my shopping list and everything done. So I'll put the trip, number of people I'm trying to feed, the number of days. And then um, if you're working with folks, it's often nice to have like your dietary considerations written down so you remember to consider them while, um, you are planning. So there's a line, um, if you look all the way to the left, water. So is water going to be available? If it's limited, at what mile? You know, um, having an understanding of your water sources and things is helpful. Um, there's a line for mileage. For big mile days, you might want to pack more snacks. Um, you know, you might want an easier breakfast. So having an understanding of that. Uh, elevation, if you have a big elevation day, day three, you might want to eat all your heavy stuff by that point. So just things to help. And then if you are planning to resupply, know what day you're going to have your resupply. Maybe you could put in their information, like a phone number um, or things along that of the store and maybe store hours just to help you with kind of planning. And then if you are going with group, you can share this information so everyone has an opportunity 
let's look at that. Um, so yeah, I basically just break down into breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. And then I put my shopping list here. If I'm gonna do a resupply, I'll put my resupply shopping list like all the way to the right. Um, and then I kind of use this for uh, for trips. And like I said, I'll repeat stuff like pretty often if it's a similar mileage trip or things like that, just it simplifies it. Um, I, I love meal planning, <laughs> but sometimes it's nice just to know like, this worked out really well. Everyone like this covered all dietary meal considerations. Like it's, it's often nice just to have a quick, easy hack. Um, yes, it's 50. All right. So um, we're going to do a quick giveaway. Um, I think Oh, you are muted, I think. That's that helps to be muted. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am probably going to pronounce your last name wrong, but Jessica Lactuta, Lactuta, I'm, you're the yeah. winner. <laughs> we picked number nine before uh, the class started. So she's number nine. Um, okay. And if you can send an email, Jessica, to uh, me at info at women who explore.com. I'm going to drop it in the chat. Um, and then also, if you have any dietary restrictions, I just like arbitrarily picked morning glory bowl, like a breakfast and a dinner. Cause I thought it might be easy. Um, the mushroom pot pie has been like a long time bestseller. Anyway, if you would prefer something else, let me know. Um, okay, I have some minutes here, so I'm going to quickly try to get through questions um, if you had anything else. So uh, in the chat, gut hook, great resource for looking up like information on elevation trails, water, a lot of good stuff there. Um, let's see. What's Zypan? I don't know what that is. If, if Angie wants to chat in there um and then um, i could do that real quick uh zypan is made by standard process it's a whole food supplement that it will help with all of those digestive problems like i just came back on from a trip that we did beans and so you know because we didn't want to do meat because we just didn't have a way to keep it you know so we but zypan it's whole food supplement no tummy problems Awesome. Standard cool. process. I'm actually writing that down. <laughs> um, yes. So then um, Garage Grown Gear, uh, I put the website down there, but it's a great resource for uh, cottage brands, everything from food to tents to backpacks to uh, travel bidets. Like they, they just have like everything and so many great ideas, really cool items, like really reflective um, like paracord for that's super lightweight for hanging your food. Um, I don't know. There's, there's like a bunch of stuff. Um, okay. I, I, I guess the Red Bull stove is an alcohol stove. Um, I, I think it probably, there's probably like another name for it, but, um, yeah, the alcohol stove and then the name of the dehydrator. So, um, it's the Nesco. I'll put it in here. Nesco Snackmaster is like a really good basic one that's pretty affordable. And then obviously, if you want to go big Excalibur, like they're they're gold standard for um, but they're expensive, but they they will they'll do sales from time to time and they offer refurbished ones. So that can also be a great option. Um, if you if this is something that you think you're really going to get into, I would say just spend the money, um, get an Excalibur. But if you're like, I'm not sure. The Nesco Snackmaster is like an excellent place to start and it will get the job done and it you'll figure out if this is something that you want to do. Um, let's see. I didn't talk about water filters. Just I, I feel like that can be a whole thing too. Um, yeah, uh, water filters versus water purifier. Again, that's kind of a up to you. Some places we will filter water and then we'll still do uh, like a tablet in it just if we're uncertain. Um, I feel like that's really has to be based on the water sources and how comfortable you feel 
also understanding, I would say, I would put water filter up there with stove with understanding like how to do it and run it. Like um, making sure that, that you can use it and that it works in a, a time frame that works for you. They all read the directions, like know if it's got the floaty piece that you really got to keep that above the silt if you're planning to do like a gravity feed filter with like a Sawyer squeeze or a bee free, like, make sure you know how to like, if it gets clogged, how to like back filter the water. Um, there, the water filter is, um, it's, it's complicated. And I would say like, pick one that works for you that's in your budget and make sure you know how to use it and how to keep it clean. And that you make sure it's clean before you go on a trip and then you don't have a way to purify water. And again, redundancy, I feel like is also really important with water. So having um, a way to, to double check your water. Um, fire bands. Um, so the alcohol stove, it, it's the same as like the small containers. Uh, it, it just, we, we always use it. Um, even if there's been fire bands, cause it, it just cooks right in there. You put a really low amount of the alcohol in there. It sits far below and it shoots the fire, um, out of the tiny holes. Um, and then we just like make sure we clear debris. We also use a, um, it's called like a tornado. It's just like a little thing that goes around. Um, but you can you can look these things up, but if you search alcohol stove, you can find DIY ways on how to make them pretty easy. Um, how many calories do you eat on an average day? I mean, I shoot for like, I mean, I don't know. I, I always get about 2,400 to be honest with you, which is not enough. Um, but we also haven't, the longest, I mean, we've biked for like a month, but um, I feel like with that, we're like, buying a lot of snacks and things along the way. In the back country, I've only done a 10 day trip. So I was never at so much of a deficit that um, it was like affected me and my ability to function in my current body weight. Um, but if you want to plan as many, like if you're doing like the weight versus um, like calories, again, like planning on around that 500 cal extra calories per hour um, that you plan on hiking in a day, like say, you know, you hike at two miles an hour, and it's a 10 mile hike, that's five, you know, five hours of hiking. Um, so planning 25 extra, 2,500 extra calories. So again, like putting in those um, Snickers and the desserts and those kinds of things, that'll like up your calories, oil packet, that'll up your calories real quick. So there's ways to work around it. All right, what's my time? All right, um, I guess, does, does anyone have any last questions or anything? And I'm gonna put my email um, in here. And if something comes up that you have a question about, um, feel free to shoot it to me. Um, I'm, we're pretty small. <laughs> it's pretty much me doing 90% of things. And then I've got a small team that helps me in the kitchen. Um, so I will like do my very best to get back to you within a week, but um, be patient with me. And I, I will definitely try to answer any questions or any follow-ups that y'all have. Um, I, I hope everyone learned something and um, took something away from today. I'm going to stop sharing too, I guess. Um, thank you for doing, taking time to share your knowledge with us. And also I am curious, what's your favorite meal that you make? That oh, you make? That's hard. It's like being your favorite child. <laughs> the day. Right now I'm super into the green tamale pie because it just started to get warm here. And I feel like uh, that meal hits the spot um, on a hot day, but they're all good for their own reasons nice. just right now that's my jam so and is it are you only available like online or are you do you have locations yeah so i'll put my i'll put our website um in here so you can check us out um uh, i'll make sure to include it with the email i'll send everybody an email with the copy of the link to the recording and then We'll include the information for your website and stuff too. Perfect. But. Yeah, you can buy online. Again, it's always great to support small and buy direct. Uh, we're also in a handful of small retailers across the U.S. And if you do go to Garage Grown Gear, you can buy your stuff there. Um, but yeah, just uh, we're small. We're growing. Um, but you can always buy from us and we try to keep as much stock as we can. Uh, it's just, it goes fast when you're small. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I'm going, I'm going to have to get some for myself. So. Um, cool. All right. Well, thanks to everybody for joining us too and taking time out of your evening. Um, if you guys do have any questions, yeah, feel free to reach out. Ashley is, um, always happy to help. And so am I, if I can answer. So, um, cool.
Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.